Hello and welcome to the Monday, October 2nd, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We got a couple of uh, quick diaries uh, from Friday and last weekend. Uh, first, Xavier wrote about a simple Netcat backdoor. And what's sort of simple about it here is that instead of re-implementing uh, Netcat in Python, all this particular Python script is doing essentially just downloading Netcat to the system and then launching it to set up a backdoor uh, Pretty straightforward and, uh, of course, not sure if it wouldn't actually be easier kind of to set up something like this in Python, uh, but uh, I guess it works. Secondly, Xavier also wrote about a backdoor that he saw on VirusTotal that goes hunting for passwords. What does make this useful is that Xavier is also listing the files that this particular malware is looking for. So maybe you can use that for something like an audit function or so making sure you don't have any matching files on the system. And if you do have, then, well, definitely make sure that they don't contain any passwords. And finally, on Sunday, we got a quick post by Didi about his tool EML dump. This tool allows you to then dump the MIME parts, what MIME types are being used in MIME files into a JSON file. So a Cradle tool to use as part of some kind of a malware analysis tool chain. We got some follow-up uh, items here for last week. Uh, first of all, I think it was Friday that I talked about the uh, XM vulnerabilities that CDI, the Zero Day Initiative, uh, discovered. Well, uh, we now have an official response uh, from the XM developers regarding these vulnerabilities. Good news is there are some mitigations and it's likely that many of the default installs are not vulnerable to some of the worst issues. First of all, I pointed out like the one uh, authentication out of bands write vulnerability. Uh, this was the one that uh, can lead to code execution without actually authenticating. Well, it turns out that it's only vulnerable if you offer external authentication mechanisms. Uh, similar, uh, if you are offering NTLM for authentication, that sort of enables some of uh, the other vulnerabilities. Some of them can be mitigated uh, by not allowing XM to directly do DNS lookups, but basically using an internal forwarder. There are some, for example, vulnerabilities in SPF uh, record lookups that could be exploited here. XM does expect to release an update on Monday, so uh, today on October 2nd. They are coordinating this currently uh, with uh, major distributions to have this new release uh, quickly available. The second update, and uh, sadly it's not that uh, great of an update, is for the WSFTP vulnerability. Again, I talked about this last week. Uh, the vulnerability sort of was announced. A patch is available for this vulnerability, and it is a pre-authentication remote uh, ex code execution vulnerability, well, a deserialization vulnerability at that. The problem here is not exploited via FTP. WSFTP, the FTP server, also provides an HTTP component that can be used via IIS, and that's what's vulnerable here. Asset Note did publish details about this vulnerability, including detail how to take advantage of the vulnerability and proof of concept exploits. And proof of concept, well, is stretching here a little bit because they walk you through how to use the YSO serial tool, which is a common tool to create deserialization exploits, uh, to create uh, arbitrary exploits for this vulnerability. So at this point, you should expect that the uh, installs of WSFTP that uh, do have uh, this HTTP uh, component, uh, that's uh, the ad hoc uh, file transfer uh, component installed and enabled. So uh, double check that you don't have it enabled and definitely update and patch WSFTP servers uh, quickly. 
Well, this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.